artists, my name is Jane Hill and I am back here holding an example of one of my favorite printing projects. This is a monotype print made with magic markers and today I'm going to show you how to make one just using markers and some other materials you have around the house so you can have some fun and make art while we're all home during the coronavirus pandemic. Now then, um, a monotype is a print that just gives you one print. You know, if you think of going to your computer to print a document, you get multiple copies of that document if you want it. Or if you think of other printmaking forms you might have studied in school, like relief printing or silk screening printing to make a t-shirt, you get multiple copies. But a monotype is different because you only get one print. And monotypes can be made with a zillion different types of materials. We're going to use markers for ours. To get our creative juices flowing though, I want to show you a print, not a monotype, but still a print, made by one of the great artists of the 20th century, African American artist, Romare Bearden. This is a picture that he made, it is a print, and it is called In the Garden. Now, this is a lithograph. The artist manipulated and drew on a stone with a special type of tool. Litho means stone, so litho lithography or lithotype means a print made with a stone process. So it's not a monotype, but it has a lot of things that we're gonna be thinking about in our monotype, and a couple of things in particular I want you to think about. First of all, this print has beautiful, rich surface textures that you see as a result of the printmaking process. If you look here, and you look here, and you look all through here, you'll see a texture created by the ink that was put on the block, picking up and sticking to the paper unevenly. So a really rich surface is created, and it's very spontaneous and magical. At the same time, Bearden has used real, simple, beautifully flowing bowl shapes. The figure is divided into simple shapes. Um, it's not realistic or detailed at all, yet it captures the essence of this figure solemnly standing in the garden with her arm in the air. The other thing that really is good to keep in mind, and we can be inspired by Bearden by, the beautiful, rich colors. There's this rich, powerful red, yellow, white, black, green, and somehow they all weave together. And the artist has balanced the colors too. If he has one color in one area like this green, whoop, he makes our eye move down to the other side of the print and up to another area. He dances the colors all around. Of course, the big bold black we see in the figure, boom, that's the center of interest. And it really draws our eye in to that central figure. So Bearden is thinking very consciously and very carefully as he creates his beautiful print of this figure in the garden. Well, we've thought about textures and colors and shapes that we need to be mindful of as we create our print. And I'd like to invite us in our print today to think about doing a large, silly, somewhat abstracted face. This is one that I made earlier, and I'll share with you really quickly how we're gonna go ahead and get it done. Now, you're gonna need some materials, and again, they're easily found around the house. You'll need a piece of stiff cardboard, just something you cut out from a cereal box. If you don't have stiff cardboard, you could probably use a hardback picture book. You're gonna need a nice clean piece of aluminum foil. You'll need some paper to make your print with. You'll need a small container of water, and in that you're going to need a sponge that you can squeeze out for some water. And then finally, one thing I really like having is a Q-tip. Oops, and I forgot the most important ingredient. You need a whole bunch of water-based markers. Don't get Sharpies. You need to have a nice water-based marker in order for your print to work out well and look good. Okay, oh, and I just found, here's another print I made earlier today. This is another monotype, and it'll give you a good idea of what's coming up and some ideas you can come up with later as well. This is another monotype print that I made. Okie dokie, let's get started on this. You're going to take your cardboard, folks. It's right here. You're going to take your beautiful aluminum foil, and you're going to wrap a present. You're going to put the cardboard inside the foil. Ta-da! And you're going to fold it up like you're wrapping a present, only, only partially way around. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it, and wrap it, and wrap it, folding my foil over the edges of my piece of cereal box or other cardboard. Okay? So here it is. 
It's just a big old piece of foil that's wrapped over a piece of cardboard. What could be simpler than that, folks? It's easy peasy. Now, some of you might say, but Miss Hill, look, it's all wrinkled. Who cares? That's going to help create some really cool textures. All righty. Now, when you guys work, you're going to work flat on the table like this. But so that you can see what I'm doing, I'm going to do my very best to demonstrate this on this demonstration board. So let me take a minute to clip my foil here to my board. That way you'll be able to see better in the long run. It just takes me a second to get it all set up. So give me a minute, folks. Okie dokie. I've got it set up. I am as close to you guys as I can get. And now it is time to start drawing. You know, you can use as many colors as you want on this. You might want to choose just two or three or four really bold ones like Bearden did, but that's up to you. I am going to start with this beautiful big blue, and I'm going to really work large to fill my page of my board. Alrighty, I want to make a face. So I'm going to make a silly looking face. Woo! Kind of coming down like that, and up like that with my blue. Man, it almost looks like a mask. Now I'm going to give it a little top knot of hair right here. And that almost could be the nose, but I think I'm going to make more hair here. This face is getting very long and skinny very quickly. I'm going to give eyes that are very round. One eye is going to be looking down. My other eye is going to be of an unequal size like this. And I think I'm going to make a long loopy nose that goes like this and a very big tall clown smile like that. Ooh, that almost looks like I don't know, maybe a Wicked Witch smile. Who is this character I'm making? I'm going to add a neck. I'm going to add a lip line right here. And I'm going to add some eyebrows. I think my face is very silly and very excited. Now, I am not going to worry about my face being realistic. So I'm going to divide my face into different sections by putting some lines that go between the features. There we go. I made a little spot there I didn't like so much, but who cares? Now I'm going to start applying color. Now that I have my basic drawing, I'm going to put some yellow on. And notice that when my yellow marker scooches close to my blue, it might pick up a little bit of the blue, but that's not a big deal. It really doesn't matter. And I'm going to remember what I learned about color balancing. So since I put some yellow in the lower part of the picture, I am going to put it over here now in the upper part of the picture to see if I can balance some colors out and make it look good. Let's try that. Alrighty, how about a little bit of red now? Let's get some red here in the hair. I think that this person has red hair. So I'm going to go ahead and color some red. And you know, as I apply my color, I notice that it just slides so easily over the foil. It's really a lot of fun to feel how the marker kind of glides and slides. This, this head's going to be a red head for sure. There we go. I've got a red-headed creature right here. And now I think it needs a big purple mouth. What about you guys? Do you think it needs a mouth? Let's give it a purple mouth. Oh my goodness. A blue and purple mouth. This is getting extremely silly, folks. I don't know if I can stand it. I'm going to give it a purple eyeball and a little dark purple pupil. And then I'm going to come in with some green and make the pupil of this side green and the white of the eye over here green. So I'm balancing my greens. And I'm going to pull a little green down here on the chin. And maybe a little bit of green right up here on this eyebrow, just that one spot. So my face is getting sillier by the minute. Now, I don't want to neglect the background. Good Lord, no. That would be ridiculous. So I'm just going to draw some loose wiggly lines. Let's try this. A couple of loose wiggly lines that I can draw, just like so. There we are. And now I'm going to pull some of the colors that I have in the face here and there in my background designs. Let's see what that looks like. I've got some red. I think I need some purple. That purple is so rich and bold. And again, I want to remind you all the markers that I'm using, they are not Sharpies. If you use a Sharpie, it's not going to work well because Sharpies don't melt too well with the water that we're going to be using to make the print. Alrighty. Now I'm going to add some, hmm, I think I need some more green and maybe a little more yellow in my background. Let's put some green right here and maybe a little bit of green up here as well. 
and maybe a little there where that yellow is and I'm going to move this and get a little bit of green in the spot that's covered by my clothespin. And hold on a second, I'm just flipping this bad boy around. I'm going to toss a little pink in just for the heck of it. There we go. Right here, let's get some pink. And maybe in this spot here that I missed. And all around the face right here. Let's get a little bit of pink on this part of the face. Now, you really want to apply your color solidly. You don't leave a lot of areas unfinished. But you also don't have to be perfectionistic about this. If there's a spot that you missed, that's going to show up as an interesting little section of paper that might look really cool left all by itself. Oops, I meant to get the orange here. Let's get some orange. Move this clip out of the way. All right, now I've got my basic color. I'll move it a little closer to the camera so you can see it. I know it's hard to see with that reflective foil, but I have a big, silly looking face. I am going to add some polka dots to it now. I'm going to add some patterns in here. I don't have to have just one silly face with these shapes. I'm going to add a couple of lines and designs. I'm going to circle the designs that I just made. And you know, as I work, I'm paying attention to my artwork and asking, boy, what kind of mood does this piece have? Is it silly? Is it serious? This one's definitely on the silly side, but you might want to make a really spooky monster with his mouth open and tons of teeth. That's up to you. You might want to make a very scary print. That's absolutely an option. So you go ahead and create and make whatever it is that you want. Um, how about a little bit of blue squiggles in here? On some of these areas, I'm going to throw a few squiggly lines in. They're very curvy, and I even am going to add some lines for the hair. Let's put a few little hair lines in. Swirl right around there. I think I'm getting to a point, folks, where I'm about ready to print. There, I missed that eyebrow. Okay, I have got colors. They're big and they're bold. I've got shapes and patterns, and now I'm ready to print. So I'm going to put my block to one side for just a second. Oh, wait a minute. No, I'm not. I've got to show you one more thing. I almost forgot. When you're going ahead and you're applying all of your ink and you're drawing along, you can take your Q-tip and you can draw into it right on here and make lines with the Q-tip. Can you see that line I just made? That's very pale here on the video, but that is a wonderful way to create more textures and patterns and it's going to come out looking really cool on your finished print. So that's something that you can try as you're working. Work with a Q-tip and get some ink on there pulled off with a Q-tip. Okay, now for the next step. I'm going to put my print down for just a second. It's not going anywhere. And I'm going to get my copy paper that I need to actually print on. Now this step is really important. I'm going to take my copy paper and I'm going to take my sponge. I have dampened my sponge thoroughly. And now I'm going to wet my paper all up and down. You guys will do this flat. I want to make sure that every part of my paper is wet. And now that I've done that, I'm going to take my print, I'm going to lay it flat, and I'm going to hover my paper on top of it. Let's see if I can hold it up like this so you guys can see. My print is right here, and it's facing ink up. Now I'm going to take my dampened paper, I'm going to lay it on top like this, and very carefully I'm going to rub it, just like this. I can even use my hand, like so. Now I'm going to put it down for a second and rub it really thoroughly. All over, as I rub with this kind of motion, I want to make sure that I am rubbing the entire print. This is just something that's hard to do, holding it up in the air, folks, so you'll have to forgive me. Let me see if I can tilt the computer so you can see a little bit more. Mm, not so much. All right. I've rubbed and I've rubbed and I've rubbed, and I think I'm ready to take it off of my plate. Let's see what we get. Whoa! That is pretty cool. It's a little pale. But I have to say, I like it. And I've got to turn it around so you guys can see. I've been so busy staring at it myself. This is my very delicate monotype print. Now, folks, this print looks very pale, but I'm not finished yet. It's a good idea to let the print dry for a minute or two. But once you've gone ahead and you've printed it, 
Let's raise it up so you can see it a little bit more. Now is the time, and it's dried a little bit. Now you can go back with your marker, and you're going to keep that beautiful, delicate, textual quality of the print. But now you can go back and start outlining your main shapes. And you can pull them out very delicately. And for this, I like to use a black marker. Sometimes I like to use a black Sharpie. It's really exciting. So the grainy, soft color of my print, which is not a bad thing. I kind of like it that my print is not super detailed. Because now what I can do is go back and add beautiful detailed designs just with my Sharpie. I might even think of a thing that I want to add. So my marker monotype is made with markers during the printing process, but now with my bold dark marker and my use of line to just bring out what I put in, I can create a really strong line that contrasts with all of the beautiful textures that I've created. And before I know it, I've got a really unusual and very silly print. Hey, wait a minute. I think that kind of looks a little bit like me. I wonder if I did a silly self-portrait. Maybe so. So I'll hold it up a little bit so you can see how bright the colors are. They really look kind of dark from a distance. And I can keep on adding shapes, designs, and other details like this. If I want to, I can also go back with a marker and color some areas in just a little bit kind of solid. I can also use colored pencils. So I can enhance my print after it's dried a minute or two and come up with some things that look really cool. Like I said, this was a print that I did earlier today. In some areas I left very plain and delicate. Other areas I colored in really solid. And this is a print that I just finished. And as you look here, I've just done a little bit of outlining, but I like how zany and silly and spontaneous it is. This is a process you just need to let go and have fun and experiment with. When you're finished with your first print, just take your sponge, squeeze it out, and wipe your plate down, just like that. Dry it, and guess what? You're good to go to make a second one. No prints will be exactly the same, so you can have a blast making some monotypes and having a beautiful printmaking experience, and I hope that you do and that you have a lot of fun. Alrighty, folks, enjoy making some monotypes. I hope that you keep your eye up here for more videos, and have a good time making art. Bye-bye.